like to call to order the regular session. Time is 7.35 and the date is March 26th. If we could all please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. Dale, could we please have the roll call? Council President Whaley. Present. Council Vice President McAtee. Here. Councilwoman Eddy. Here. Councilwoman Fogarty. Here. Councilman O'Neill. Here. All members present. Thank you, Dale. We have the approval of the minutes of previous meetings. We have the work session of March 5th, March 6th, and March 12th. I move approval of those minutes. Second. second. We have motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstention? Motion carries 5-0-0. We also have the regular session, March 12th, 2012. I move approval of the regular session, March 12th. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstention? Motion carries 5-0-0. Would any council person like anything removed from the consent agenda? I move approval of the consent agenda. Second. Motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstention. Motion carries. Which brings us to licenses. First license is a resolution granting a victualling license to Dave's Coffee, LLC, 396 Main Street, Wakefield, Rhode Island, subject to approval by the Fire Chief and Communications Superintendent. Application by David Lanning, 4 Oxford Street, Westerly, Rhode Island. This is a new license, and it is continued from March 12th. Is David Lanning here, or somebody here to represent Dave's Coffee? Yes. If you could come to the podium, welcome. And this is your opportunity to talk and tell us a little bit about your endeavor with Dave's Coffee. And you have the cameras, so. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're planning to open in Wakefield. Um, I don't know if you know our coffee bar in Charlestown, Rhode Island, but um, we found a really nice spot in Wakefield. We have a a fairly good customer base here and are excited to bring our coffee and baked goods to Wakefield. That's great. Yeah. Questions here at the table? Polly? Uh, will you be serving just baked goods um, and coffee? What, what type of coffee do you have? Do you have lattes? And... We do. We have um, espresso based drinks so it's lattes, um, ice drinks and then regular drip coffee. And then baked goods like muffins and cookies, things like that. Great. Will you be making sandwiches or? No. No, it's all to do with coffee. Right, right. Thank you. Yeah. Sounds good. Other questions, Kathy? Did you have a mobile truck too? I see your Dave's truck. N um, no. Not just for Our, advertisement purposes. Well, it's a truck that we, we got more for promotion than. Um, it's not a mobile setup like a food truck or anything inside. Okay. No, yeah. I wasn't sure what that, I, I yeah. see it when I head down towards the westerly area there. So you're in with the, the, the Galapagos. Exactly. The, but yeah. oh, but nice. it's not the clothing store. That it's just going to be the coffee. Just then. the coffee bar. The coffee bar. Right. Okay. All right. Good. Yeah. Okay. Further questions? Carol? Um, now, you're going where the old Orbeez was. Is that the location? Yes. Okay. And um, what, what are your hours of operation? We're going... Our, our hours in Charlestown are 6 to 6, mm -hmm. and we're going to try to do a little bit later here because I think there's, a, there's more activity at night, so mm -hmm. maybe 6 to 7 to start and then, and then see. Oh, nice. And yeah. uh, when do you plan on opening? Um, I'm hoping for end of May, beginning of June. Great. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Jim? That means you're doing a lot of internal work there. The, um, those windows have been sealed shut now for about a month. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, um, we have another little issue we have to deal with with parking. So it's kind of we're holding off a little bit until that's all squared away. So it, it actually slowed things down a little bit. So yeah. But we are going to make it um, in a lot of improvement inside the building. I look forward to it. I'm basically next door, so good, good. nice to have someone there. <laughs> All right. Any other questions? 
All right, this is exciting. Ready to vote. All in favor. Wait, I move approval of new license A. Second. <laughs> motion and a second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Opposed, abstention. Motion carries. We wish you the best of luck. Thank you. Good You'll see all of us there, I'm sure. All right. <laughs> Which brings us to license B. This is a resolution granting a holiday sales license to Cox Solutions Store, 35 <coughs> South County Commons Way, Wakefield, Rhode Island, subject to approval by the fire chief and the communications superintendent. Application by Irene Fakara, 170 Utopia Road, Manchester, Connecticut. This again is a new license and it's continued from March 12th. I'm Welcome. Irene. I am Tina Rogers. I'm the manager of the solution store in the um, South County Commons. So we've been there for a little while, but we've now evolved from a digital store to a solution store. So we not only offer um, services, but we sell retail with uh, modems, routers. So it's kind of a one-stop um, shop for our customers, which we're finding is really um, good for us and for our customers. So. We're really excited to have the holiday hours, and we've actually changed some of our hours. We've shortened some. We're now 9 to 6, uh, Monday through Saturday, and Sundays 12 to 5. So we find it works a little bit better, but we want to be available to our um, holiday traffic down here, you know, Labor Day weekend, um, the seasonal traffic. So we want to be able to provide the services to the customers when they need them. So. Sounds good. Questions here at the table? Jim? Or maybe more, more to Steve. Steve, what is fifty dollars? What's the charge for the holiday license by the town? Fifty, 50 even. Okay, and that covers seven holidays. Uh, how many holidays? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we're open all of them. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I, I think we're going to be primarily open Memorial Day and Labor Day. We find those to be the, the biggest ones down there. I, you know, they asked me about Fourth of July. I'm from South Kingstown and this year I'm like, do not do it. <laughs> no, it's not a good idea. No, no. People are out enjoying the day and you know, we don't wanna take away from that and it's not good for us or anybody else, so. Then we really appreciate it, only two days for the $50. Well, exactly, see, it's even better for you. <laughs> Polly. Uh, so you, you deal with your Cox customers? Yes, we do. We also, um, within the um, solution structure, which I neglected to mention, we have Flint Audio Video in there with us as well. We host them um, in our store, and we're in their location in Middletown, and they provide um, TVs, um, any type of service. I mean, they sell the TVs, but they have outstanding customer service as well uh, with, you know, setting up the equipment in your home, many times free of charge, coming out and doing... Um, surveys of what would, you would need to have in your home to make it work the way that you want. And we've, we found that their um, customer service we feel matches our own and it's, it's a really good match. And we've had really good feedback from our customers and even our mystery shops that we've had um, in, in the location from our residents here in town. So it's very good. Thank you. So you'll be com more complete than just We will be. <coughs> and, so, um, um, yeah. and as I say that, you know, I, I had my, my manager or my, you know, my our manager for New England and today, and he's, he's from Connecticut. And I said, you have to understand, when you're in Rhode Island and South Kingston, you don't go past the towers. <laughs> you, you got it. So if we can house it in here, it's a good thing. And, and we're, we're finding that to be the case. <laughs> so he's getting it. I'm like, see, it makes sense. We just don't go past the towers. <laughs> So he's like, oh, all right. So he's, he says, I see what you're saying. I go, it's just how it is. So, Jim. So will you be handling the technical questions? Because every time I call, I seem to wind up in some unknown place in North America. You need to come see us down here. Well, locally, we, we are starting to take those calls back in our call center. But locally, within all of our solution stores, one of the things that we're really focusing on is we have educators. These educators are specifically in mind to help customers with any problem that they have. I actually had um, the educator in there today setting up a customer's um, router, locking it down, making sure it was good and having everything that he needed for when he left and a number to call back directly to us in the store and not to a call center. So we're really taking back that ownership and the localism to bring it back into our communities. Thank you. So. Jim, I can um, attest to that. I've been down there and believe me, they have given me more information and set Very me good. straight. <laughs> they are wonderful. Excellent. Yeah. Any other questions here at the table? Okay, do, can we have a motion? I move approval of new license B. Second. We have motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 
Opposed, abstention, motion carries. Tina, bring best of luck. Thank you very much. We Council. hope to see you all. Thank you. Good luck. Our third license is a resolution granting a holiday sales license to South County Art Supply, 237 Robinson Street, Wakefield, Rhode Island, subject to approval by the Fire Chief and Communications Superintendent. Application by Andrea Petish. Peitch. Peitch. Peitch? Yeah, Peitch. Okay. Thank you. 183 High Street, Wakefield, Rhode Island. Welcome, Andrea. And Thanks. if you could just tell a little bit about this art supplies, it's great. Well, I want to open an art supply store that I think will serve the community and URI students and possibly tourists somewhat. So I wanted to be open on Sundays during the summer. And I think that's what I filed. I'm not sure if it was a holiday. Is it Sunday and holiday? Is that the same? Yeah. It's the same thing. OK. So questions here at the table for Andrea. Polly? What types of material, and, and are you doing children's as well as? Yeah, uh, I'm going to do um, children's, and then I want to have a um, one kind of professional quality line of supplies across the board, and then a more like a student grade of everything, paints and um, drawing stuff. And, and pastels and yep. papers and, mm -hmm. oh, great. Yeah. And we'll have some classes too, I think. So. That'd be nice. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's going to be great. Thank you. It's turning into an arts district down there. Yeah. <laughs> Kathy. So I assume you're an artist. So yes. Yep. Did you study locally at the like Rhode Island School of Design? Or? I have taken classes at RISD and um, at the Guild, actually. Oh, yeah. And I have a business. I'm a silhouette artist, so I do a lot of traveling with that. And this will be nice to have like a regular thing that I'm, I don't have to drive all over the country yeah. to do. Oh, so nice. It's a good idea. There's definitely yeah. a need for it down here. Sure. Good idea. Thanks. Beautiful. Any other questions? Jim? I thought I read about somewhere where that you could um, an easel to go uh -huh. with all the <laughs> paints, brushes, <laughs> such a thing. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a good idea. I, yeah, I thought like a watercolor kit for yeah, people kit, to take to the beach would be good. Yep. All right. Idea Great idea. idea. <laughs> okay. Carol? I, I think you'll do well down here because I do think there are a lot of artists, uh, whether they're professional or they're taking classes, but mm -hmm. quite a few. I know my mother used to paint and she used to go to Providence to buy supplies. Or, yeah. Uh, well, you know, that's what gave me the idea was that I had to, I would go all over to like three or four places in town and then end up going to Providence. Yeah. But I feel like if people knew there was one place where most likely they would get what they needed, they would go there first. So. Yeah. Great idea. <laughs> Thank you. Exciting. Any further questions here at the table? On the I move to approval of new, I, new, new license for C. Second. Motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, abstention, motion carries. Andrew, we wish you the best of luck. Thank you. Yeah. Good luck. And license D is a resolution granting a Victor Lynn license to Chemco. 32 Whisper Pine Way, Exeter, Rhode Island, for concession operations at Old Mountain Field in the Town Beach, subject to award of the concession operations contract and administrative approvals. Application by Kenneth Elliott, Whispering Pine Way, Exeter, Rhode Island. And this is a new license. Welcome. Might you be Kenneth? Kenneth Elliott. <laughs> <laughs> the F is for Franklin. <laughs> and if you'd like to tell us. Yes, uh, uh, we have been food concessionaires for several years, uh, dating back to uh, Wickford Town Beach, which we had the, uh, the contract there for five years. We proceeded on to uh, uh, Scarborough Beach, and we were there for 10 years. Uh, unfortunately, um, there was an uh, out-of-town concession yeah, that came in and liked Scarborough better than I did and we were outbid. Uh, hence we have been looking for other concessions to run and, and ran into this situation and, and we're here to, uh, to give you our services. That's great. Questions here at the table. Jim, did I see a hand and then Polly? No? Oh, no, I was Polly? reaching for the water. I'm sorry, no, you saw Polly's hand. Polly. I wondered what kind of things, what kind of foods do you serve at your concessions? It will be somewhat limited because your facilities don't allow for us, you don't have uh, uh, the, the proper uh, uh, ancillary systems in your buildings 
so we can't do any fried foods. Um, However, we will be doing hot dogs, hamburgers, hot dogs. cheeseburgers, uh, uh, a limited menu. There will be ice cream. There also will be uh, a product that uh, uh, we developed, and it's called Baby Elliot's Frozen Lemonade. And that'll be available at uh, all of the uh, areas that we'll be covering. Sounds good. Yeah. Sounds like good concession food. Mm. It is. Other questions here at the table? Carol? There's no french fries at the beach? Well, you can't because, <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately, you don't have an Ansel system in your building. Oh. And oh. Uh, without that, it's, it's somewhat difficult. I guess. We don't want to burn your buildings down. No, no, no. no. I'm just surprised. <laughs> I always thought there were. Not that I've been ordering them. Uh, but. <laughs> well, now that we have a place to recycle the, the grease. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, all right, further questions here for Kenneth. Just, Ella. Yeah, yeah uh, you said, I uh, hate to take you back to Scarborough, maybe painful, but um, did those folks just bid on the Scarborough contract alone or all the state beaches? What, um, can you just break it down for me without giving away a whole lot of it? Yeah, the state beaches are uh, revolved on a five year interim, and uh, they're entitled to anybody that can bid them, provided that they're qualified. And the company that came out of Maryland was highly qualified. And it's not uh, who bid the lowest, it's who bid the highest. And they outbid us by a considerable number. Okay. And, and they just bid for Scarborough or all the concessions for all the state beaches? Individually. Individually. Uh, and they all normally come up all at the same time. Okay. So uh, uh, Chemco, needless to say, will be there in another two years and we will be bidding again. Okay. Great. Great. Further questions here at the table? Carol? Do you have any other concessions around the state? Presently, we do not. But you're looking for some, I would Oh, say. yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Social Security doesn't do it. Oh, I, know. I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> I certainly any, want you to do well. <laughs> any last minute questions? Okay, we're ready to vote. All in favor? Oh, no. Oh, uh, oh, sorry. I am just I move like approval <laughs> of new license D. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed abstention. Motion carries 500. Kenneth Franklin Elliott, good luck. Good Thank luck. you. <laughs> okay, which brings us to our public hearing. This is a public hearing relative to filing the program year 2012 Small Cities Community Development Block Grant application for the purposes of reviewing the draft application and obtaining citizen views on the proposed activities. The local priority list is shown on Exhibit 1, attached here too. The town is eligible to apply for $300,000 in funds for the purpose of undertaking activities that meet one of the following three named national objectives. First one is urgent needs. Second is prevention, elimination of slums or blight. And the third is activities benefiting low moderate income persons. So at this time, I'm gonna turn it over to Mr. Alfred. The application for this public hearing tonight is the second of two public hearings that are required for the application process for the uh, municipality to apply for a uh, small cities uh, development block grant uh, program. The first hearing was held on February 27th of this year when we solicited proposals from various human service agencies for uh, funding consideration for the uh, 2012 uh, grant year. For the 2012 year, municipalities are able to submit funding requests uh, with a maximum dollar amount of $300,000. This is $100,000 less than what the uh, funding levels had been in prior years based on uh, federal cutbacks in the funding for the CDBG program. For the 2012 application, we received 14 proposed activities from various organizations. Staff has prepared a draft uh, local priority listing for the activities and the recommended uh, uh, grant funding uh, amounts for each of those agencies. Staff has recognized that all of the requests uh, presented are worthwhile projects. However, the applications do require and necessitate the ranking of the activities. What we're looking at in terms of priorities are one, critical service and uh, public facilities that serve low and moderate income 
uh, households. Second, housing for low and moderate. Third, employment and job training for low and moderate income uh, residents, as well as other service and facilities. If you go to exhibit one, and we'll run through the applications and the funding, the uh, priority funding uh, proposal is one Johnny Cake Center of, of Peacedale. This is the emergency food pantry and the school vacation breakfast and lunch program, uh, as well as the employment job skills program that is administered through the Johnny Cake Center of Peacedale for $20,000. Second is the uh, rehabilitation of the Tatro Senior Center's annex. <clears throat> this includes uh, some of the major renovation activities that were presented and adopted within the council's uh, capital improvement program for the next uh, uh, six years. They include uh, uh, replacement of windows as well as uh, exterior shingling installation and uh, uh, siding uh, replacements. The uh, third activity is Welcome House to offset their operating expenses associated with the emergency shelter. Fourth is Welcome House again for re-roofing of two of the affordable uh, housing duplex units that are owned uh, by Welcome House. The uh, fifth is the uh, Habitat for Humanity. This is a uh, $57,400 funding proposal which will assist in offsetting costs associated with the construction of the four affordable housing units currently under construction on Old North Road in, uh, in Kingston. Sixth is the uh, Domestic Violence uh, Resource Center, renovations of their uh, safe house and that's actually a major project uh, uh, for domestic violence uh, where they'll be uh, converting the existing communal living arrangements into four separate uh, transitional housing units as well as having two bedrooms set aside for emergency shelters. Seventh activity is the uh, Washington County Community Development Corp. There's really two uh, applications, uh, uh, one application this year, that's for operating expenses associated with the uh, regional agency and to, that assist the town in uh, identifying and uh, working toward meeting affordable housing goals. If you recall last year, we had also given them, uh, through this program, $4,000 toward the operating expenses and about $90,000, which was for uh, property acquisition that was then renovated uh, into affordable housing unit in, in town. The Sensational Child is a job training program that provides assistance to South Kingstown residents. Education exchange is for personnel and equipment expenses associated with uh, their program for getting people through uh, education uh, necessary for our GED certification. Uh, number 10 is the neighborhood uh, revitalization, peace deal, uh, revitalization. This proposal, if funded, would provide uh, necessary design and construction of a bus shelter uh, of uh, an artistic design, according to Leslie, uh, that would be located in, in Peacedale. The uh, number 11 is Galilee Mission. This is rehab of existing transit, uh, uh, transitional housing units that they have in Narragansett. Uh, number 12, again, would be uh, Peacedale Neighborhood Revitalization. Uh, the proposal here is to provide uh, equipment and uh, materials to develop an audio uh, walking uh, tour of historic Peacedale. The 13th activity is Community Housing Land Trust. These would be operating expense uh, uh, subsidies. Uh, they provide technical assistance in land banking activities, again, for affordable housing purposes. And the final activity, number 14, was the Rhode Island Center for Assistance to those in need, and this would be, uh, again, operational support for the uh, food pantry that operates in Charleston. Uh, this program also received funding in the, uh, the current year. There would also be program administration in the amount of $12,000 for a total application of $300,000. Uh, I would suggest that with the cutback from the four hundred dollars to the three hundred dollars in total funding levels, we'll probably see what had been funded at about a $296,000 in the current year will probably be phased down someplace in the target of around $200,000. Again, our priorities that are listed here are local priorities. Uh, they will then be evaluated and the state has the opportunity to set 
what they see as the final priority and the award of, of grant itself. The next step in our public hearing process would be to have the council adopt uh, the uh, proposed application fundings as presented this evening or to revise if, if necessary. Once that's completed, the information would then be transmitted to the planning board who must then certify that each of the program activities are in accord with the uh, town's comprehensive community plan. Then at that point, uh, we would have the application submitted to the state for funding. I'd also note that CDBG is a long-term program. It's been in operation since 1985 was the first year of funding uh, for this program, uh, and South Kingstown has been successful each and every year. One program activity which isn't listed this year is the uh, community development block grants contributions toward the housing uh, renovations uh, and rehab program. That was funded, I believe, at $90,000 in the current year. We've currently got sufficient funds for the next year. That program is administered for the town through the CAP agency. Uh, at this point, they've got, uh, I believe, about uh, 15 pending applications that should be processed over the, uh, over the next year. We're finding with the rehab program, with a change in, in banking availability, as well as uh, how tough the economy is, that we are able to fund that program once every two years. Every other year, we're able to provide the contribution. So it's not a case where there will not be housing rehabilitation money available uh, for the 2012-13 uh, year, but rather that there's adequate funding source uh, available to be able to continue that based on the existing 2011 year funding, uh, funding level. I'd be glad to answer any questions council or public may have relative to the application that the town hopes to file. Thank you, Steve. Questions here at the table? Carol? Steve, you listed in your memo the uh, the top six as the main priority. I, I, are you, do you think we may not get the full 300,000? We, we normally don't. We, hmm. we normally would not see the, the, the full funding uh, that, that's available. We can apply up to 300, but the final uh, decision is made through the, uh, through the state when they uh, look at all of the applications that are submitted by all the cities and towns. And the reason I think it'll be less than 300 is that with a 20% decrease in the funding level uh, from the federal government to the state for 2012, uh, and then going down where we were, we had applied for $400,000 last year, got 296. So if we see the same type of relationship, we'll probably be in the $200,000 area. So it would go by priority, so. No, not necessarily. No. The state has the right to be able to revise the priorities based on looking at our applications. That may be one of the reasons that food pantry in Charleston may be looked at as being a high, high priority when the state looks at the mix and match because they'll be looking at the Westerly application, the Charleston application, and what their objective is is to look beyond the geographic boundaries of each of the towns to ensure that the distribution of the community development uh, funds are going where they're meeting the most, most purpose for low and moderate income, either for, uh, for the food, the housing, or the jobs and training. So they could reprioritize that yes, priority list. Yes, they list. can and okay. they do. And Jim, would, sorry, I just have one more question. Would it change the amount you give to each uh, that, that uh, the funding request and the application amount? Like, could, could the state then say, well, we don't want to give we want to give some to, like you, you use the example of the, uh, the RICAN that they might want to give to them and take some away from another organization? Yes, they could. And say, okay, instead of giving 20,000, we'll that's give why 15. It's important. That's why it's important for us to tell them what our priorities are. But if, they're, if we're looking for 300,000 and they're going to phase it down to 200, right. they may take dollars out of each of them. Instead of giving 5,000, it may be a $3,000 if they wanted to distribute it to all the agencies. Mm -hmm or what they may do is to cut one of the major uh, uh, funding levels, uh, possibly the Tetro Senior Center Annex would be looked at as a standalone that they could cut sufficient uh, or, or multiple funds from. But again, it'll, uh, this will be based on the state's review, not just of our application, but really uh, on a regional basis. Thank you. Jim. I just, uh, I'd like to believe that uh, all of these are, um, all these agencies are most deserving. It's, uh, 
you know, I hate for us to put together a priority list and then have the state um, uh, decide that uh, they know better, but um, really a, a shame that we cannot um, help everybody here because even uh, two-thirds of the uh, grant would go, just do wonders for all of these programs. We wind up getting 200,000 instead of the 300,000. So I guess my question is, over the last few years, um, have we been on the money with our priorities and uh, pretty much that, that's the way it's come down, the top five or six? And if that's the case, are we discouraging these other folks from uh, um, seeking money and coming in with their applications? No, I, I don't think so, Jim. If you look at the 2011 application, the CDC uh, got $4,000. The Housing Information Program got 1500 uh, Welcome House Expenses did get 20,000. Johnny Cake did get 20,000. Thunder Mist had got 5,300. So there was a, a distribution with uh, uh, nine to 10 uh, different agencies receiving limited funding, not 100% of what they asked for. 2010 year, there were 10 agencies that received funding. Same with uh, uh, 2009, there was 11. So there's a lot of money that uh, that is going out in small denominations, two to five thousand dollars, but the major programs like the housing rehab, when we need the money, those are full funded. Johnny Cake has never been underfunded, uh, and we're, we're seeing a greater effort. Uh, you know, three years ago we picked up uh, two hundred and fifty thousand dollars in total grants. Ninety of that went into the adult day uh, uh, program. So, uh, I think that uh, we've seen a good deal of the priorities that we've set funded. But obviously, it's not funded at the same $300,000 level. I wouldn't expect to see it, uh, see it at that level. But it also depends on how many applications are filed by the other cities and towns uh, and whether they're all asking for the, uh, uh, for the same dollar amount. You know, since 1985, I think we've collected almost $4.4 million out of this program. But the average in the last couple of years has been in the $250,000 range. So uh, I think it'll continue to go down. There is action in Congress at this point uh, for reappropriation on CDBG. There was a letter that went out uh, uh, on the Senate side asking, in fact, our local uh, senators uh, were signatory on that letter, asking for uh, several billion to be added back into this program. If that's the case, they may have a, a supplemental appropriation that could come forward and there may be additional funding that's available. But no, at this point, we yeah. know that the, uh, the max we can write for is 300, and we never see the max come, come to us. Yeah, well, maybe Congress will, um, maybe could be some uh, supplemental budget. And uh, uh, my last question, uh, the Tetrot, however you pronounce that, Senior Center Annex, is that a state agency? Or, um... No, that, that is the, what was the original uh, uh, facility before we built the main building. It's it, the area that, it, it's the, uh, the barn, what it had been the original barn on the property and had been the meal site. That now is used as, uh, uh, for the food, uh, uh, food storage uh, that is distributed uh, uh, through the state agency. It's also used for quilting and for uh, uh, knitting and storage of the various uh, uh, arts and craft projects. The overall objective would be to be able to renovate that space and that was included in the capital improvement program over the next six years. As the needs of the senior program continue to expand, and they will continue to expand as we go forward, that as we need additional space, rather than having to put an addition on the main building, that we would recapture the two older buildings that are there and bring them back up to a, a, a U standard. Thank you. Always learning something new. Thank you. Further questions here at the table? Kathy? Um, we don't see any problems with any of these with the p planning board as far as um, me meeting the town comprehensive plan. Do you see any problems? No, not at all. I, the, you know, the planning department's uh, the department that processed the application and certainly is able to make representation on each of these as meeting the conditions of the comprehensive community plan. So, no, I don't suspect there's any problem with that. And I want to say you did a good job, Steve, presenting this, but you're no Ray Nickerson. <laughs> I miss Renee. I miss Ray. <laughs> this is always his baby. Sorry, Steve. <laughs> we he could not respond to that. <laughs> None at all. He's speechless. <laughs>
We can always ask for a guest appearance That's next right. year. We <laughs> Any further questions here at the table? Uh, okay, I'm go did you want to continue? No, just the, uh, if, if the council would consider using the resolution that's on page two of the memorandum. Yeah, from, I'm going to uh, open it up to the public first. And then um, we do have that resolution. All right, so at this time, this is a public hearing. So I'm going to open the microphone up for any public comment on public hearing A. I'd like to acknowledge that. Peggy Benz from Education Exchange is present. Hi, Peg. You want to say a few <laughs> words? <laughs> I was hoping, because you have a great organization. Well, I would just like to thank um, the support that we've had from the town of South Kingstown. Um, in the last several years, we've faced some strong difficulties, and the town has been very supportive for us. Um, and mostly, you know, through the community, the community development block grants, since um, July 1st of this year, we have been able to assist over 75 residents of South Kingstown. Nice. Um, through our doors, we have our main office being in Peacedale, but we have sites in Westerly and North Kingstown. But 28% of our clients come from South Kingstown, and I'd like to thank you for all the support that you've given us. So many times we hear about the disconnect between the job market and the workers, and your support helps us make that connection to educate the workforce so that we have skilled workers to enter those jobs, and thank you very much. Well, we also want to thank you, Peg, because you have a great program. So, any other comments from the public? Seeing none, then, Ella, I move that we uh, close the public hearing. Second. We have a motion to second. I'm going to close the public hearing. Any last-minute comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstention? Motion carries 5-0-0. And can we have that motion? I move that uh, to authorize the filing of the PY 2012 Small Cities Community Blank block grant program application for an amount not to exceed $300,000 and in accordance with the local priority list as shown on exhibit one attached here too. I move. Second. So move. Motion and a second. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Motion carries 5-0-0. But it's the presentation is what I was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. And express our thanks to Ray as well. Okay, which brings us to communications um, 8A. This is a resolution adopted February 22nd, 2012 by the Boroughville Town Council in support of General Assembly Bill 2012, House 7561, an act relating to elections, registration of voters that would provide for the use of post office boxes for the purposes of acknowledgement of registration or change of address and verification of residence in those cases where the prospective voter does not receive home mail delivery, is received, placed on file, and the town council further directs. Polly? We discussed this in the work session, and apparently we only have 40 such cases in South Kingstown. But I don't remember what we decided to do. Did we s decide to support this because it uh, looks like a good thing, or did we decide to? I move that we support it. I, I, I would also um, move to support it as well, but I do have a question for Dale. Um, when these people that did not receive the notification show up at the polls and are told, um, you know, they have to fill out this form, is it a lengthy form, do you know? It's like quick. A, a duplicate registration form. Yeah. So it's your name, address, party affiliation, signature, and you yeah. go and Yeah. I, I, I could support it. I just wanted to Cal? ask, uh, Dale, could you uh, clarify what you told us at the work session about why it doesn't really affect the voters we have here? Well, it doesn't really affect them because when they go to the polls, it, they're inactive. But in order to get active, they have to fill out this, it's called an affirmation card. And what an affirmation card is, is really just a registration form. 
so it re-registers them, and then they, they go and they, they vote. They're allowed to vote. Great. So I think supporting it would be fine. Okay. Any other comments? Any discussion? Do we have a motion? I, I made oh, the motion. motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. We have motion and second. Any further discussion? Okay. Are we ready to vote? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstention? Motion carries 5-0-0. Thank you. Which brings us to communication C. This is a communication dated March 8, 2012 from Senator Bethany Mora, District 19, seeking support for the General Assembly Bills 2012 Senate 2371 and 2012 House 7746, acts relating to property, mortgage foreclosure and sale that would require that foreclosure deeds be recorded within 30 days of foreclosure and would increase the penalties for violation of this requirement is received, placed on, fi on file, and the town council further directs. We discussed this also at the work session, and I believe we discussed that this would just uh, increase penalties to persons who were, uh, had their properties foreclosed on, and we decided to place it on file. Second. We have motion and second. Any further discussion? Ready to vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, abstention, motion carries 5-0-0. We have communication D. This is a resolution adopted March 13th, 2012 by the Exeter West Greenwich School Committee in opposition to General Assembly Bills 2012, House 7617, and House, I'd like you to correct, instead of 7260 in our agenda here, it is 7620, regarding, regarding binding arbitration for teacher and other school employees in opposition to House 7250 and Senate 2532 that would mandate continuation of expired teacher contracts and in support of Senate 2158, House 7272 and House 7863 that would move the teacher layoff notice deadline from March 1st to June 1st are received and placed on file and the town council further directs. Uh, we discussed this also at the work session and uh, we have we discussed accepting the entire uh, resolution, and in, in so doing, um, that would be, we join um, Exeter West Greenwich in their opposition regarding binding, ar binding arbitration for teachers and other school employees, and also we would be in opposition, join them in their opposition to, um, to mandating the continuation of expired teacher contracts. But on the other hand, uh, we would support them in their resolution that would move the teacher layoff notice deadline from March 1 to June 1st. So I think we can do this all in one swoop. And I didn't say all the bills, but I think we have them listed pretty well. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Kathy. And as I discussed too in the work session, that it would be interesting to see what our legislators have to say about this since We've um, sent up this before, and uh, they had different votes, so I hope that we can forward this on for discussion when we do set up a legislative um, meeting, um, again, with our legislators in the future, uh, just to let them know what we're, and get clear on all the numbers and where we stand with them. I think it would be a good idea to continue to do that, too. I'd like to see where they stand on them all. Could I ask uh, one suggestion? It says regarding binding arbitration for teachers and other school. I'd ask that you amend that to be other school and or municipal employees because one of the bills is uh, related to uh, a Municipal Employee Arbitration Act, which would be outside of the teachers. Mm -hmm. So you so agree with that? Uh, I'll and the person move that second to make that amendment? I think Kathy. I'll Kathy's. second. Okay. Sorry. All right. And. Uh, Kath, were you looking for um, adding on? No, I'm just, or I just, just making wanted, a statement. I just want to make it, bring it forward when we do have our meeting with our legislators, whenever we do set that up in the future, that this okay. is something that we discuss. All right, great. And, uh, Carol? I just wanted to say one thing about moving the, um, the layoff notices from March 1 to June 1. It, it seems to make sense, especially in light of the fact that uh, the school districts and the uh, municipalities have not, uh, by March 1, we have not yet uh, 
finalized our budgets, and therefore we'll, you know, we're pink slipping people with, without a concrete idea of how many would go. And this should avoid uh, the extension of the layoff notice, should avoid the unnecessary anxiety and stress for teachers uh, receiving layoff notices that wouldn't ordinarily receive them if the date were later in the year. I just wanted to mention that. No, that's a good point, Carol. Um, any further discussion here at the table? We have motion and second. We ready to vote? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstention? Motion carries 5-0-0. Next is a communication E. This is a communication received March 21st, 2012 from Jonathan Daly LaBelle requesting that the town council review their rules of decorum is received, placed on file, and the town council further directs. Um, and I'll give Jonathan Daly LaBelle um, a chance if he wishes to address this. Um, I'd like to state that during our work session, we talked about some ground rules here for decorum at the town council table, and I'll just um, summarize them that we will be um, waiting to be acknowledged by the chair before we speak. And uh, um, we're also going to reiterate that we will try to limit any sidebar conversations here at the table, um, promote positive body language and any kind of distractful behavior, as well as um, maintaining respect. We recognize that every member here in the town chambers, as well as the public, has the right freedom of speech but we're asking that there be no personal attacks or any kind of um, disrespect. We realize that we are a very diverse group here sitting at the town council table, and uh, sometimes you have discourse to get to some resolution, but we are in agreement that it should be done respectfully. And at the end of the night, that we should walk out of the town chambers um, respecting one another. We would also hold the public um, to this accountability that we're holding ourselves to here at the town council table. Would any town councilor like to add anything else? The, the cell phone use also um, we talked about during our work session. And there is a sign out in the town hall and we have discussed um, it used to say that we would shut cell phones off. It has now been changed to uh, we will silence cell phones, but we are going to add that there will be no texting um, in the town chambers. Uh, we have discussed that we all have families at home, and if people would like you know, to respond to their children through texting or um, any kind of a phone, a text message that comes in, um, they may leave the town chambers and, you know, do the texting or the use of the cell phone out there. So that was agreed upon. Um, would any town councilor like to respond to anything that we've discussed before I open this up to Jonathan Dale LaBelle? And I'm not sure that you'd like to respond to your letter or... Uh, Jonathan Daly LaBelle, uh, thank you for uh, recognizing this communication and allowing me to come up and uh, speak to this. Um, I was here for the work session, so I heard um, the discussion there. Uh, I've heard what's said here, and that that's, it sounds uh, very good to me. Um, a lot of it's just common courtesy, and uh, sometimes just need you know people need reminders um, every so often. Uh, so, you know, I, I guess I hope that it is enforced, um, and I think it really may just be as simple as, you know, when, there's, when an issue arises, addressing it at that time. Um, and I think the thing that was really the most striking to me was seeing some of the public officials at that last uh, school committee um, town council meeting, you know, a few school committee members texting you know, while the administrators are, are presenting and the conversation's going on. And so that's such a simple, basic thing. And when people can't even do the simple basic things right, then I think that they lose sight of the bigger things uh, very quickly after that. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, there's also um, further discussion that we had that um, I also want to just elaborate a little bit on. 
Um, it was also discussed in the work session that when people come to the microphone, um, if there is incorrect information, any town councilor here at the table will um, address it through the chair and uh, the information will be corrected. Um, we also talked about um, any accusations of dishonesty or personal attacks um, for anyone here at the town council table. Again, if a town councilor feels um, offended or grieved, they will address it through the chair um, and, the, and the, I will allow them to speak and address the person at the microphone. Um, we had that discussion with our town solicitor um, and I think that that's what we agreed with. Um, also, we talked about any repetitiveness um, at each meeting that is brought up unless there is new information that have has arisen, um, then we will just ask for um, you know, that it's already been stated at a prior meeting and unless there is new information, um, we'll ask that it not be brought forward. Did I capture everything that was discussed in the work session? Did I miss anything? Jim? Well, I don't think you missed anything. I, I just wanted to acknowledge uh, Jonathan's uh, letters. Um, I too, uh, for that work session with the school committee, just shook my head there. Uh, the last two or three uh, members there just with the cell phone action. This is a $60 million part of our budget and um, everybody's not on board paying attention and those darn cell phones uh, uh, were at the ready by uh, two if not three of them uh, at the end of the table and it's just simply appalling. I mean, it's as though they don't have to come. It's as though we're just automatically, we'll give them the $60 million with no discussion. And the other thing that Jonathan wrote about, which we did talk about in the work session, which we really cannot do anything about uh, with the school committee uh, issue here, um, it's um, well, basically the school committee business. Uh, the town council certainly has uh, no authority uh, without going through uh, an incredible effort to uh, um, ever remove uh, someone from office, uh, I think anything short of a felony. Um, certainly we're, uh, we're concerned when, um, especially up here at the council, you know, I certainly know uh, uh, just how hard we work up here and uh, how appreciative we are of the uh, confidence of the voters who put us up here. Uh, we respect that charge and we certainly work hard at it. Um, Believe me, I've, uh, I've, I've never seen a council really uh, quite work so hard uh, uh, outside of uh, the uh, ordinary business of the uh, chambers here. And so it's very impressive and very, very discouraging uh, when uh, someone does not take uh, the charge as seriously as we do, but there, there isn't anything I believe that we can do about it. Thank you, Ola. Um, so you kind of jumped to the next communication, yeah, but that's well, okay. Yeah, well, we've just thrown yeah. it all together there, but that's. All right. I'm, um, any further discussion here at the table? Okay. At this time, do we have a motion to um, place this on file? I'm sorry? Please come forward. How are you, Doral? Uh, Doral Beasley. Um, could you just like, uh, expound on, on your cell phone usage? Because Having not heard any of this before tonight, it sounded like you're saying that you can't answer your phone. You could be on vibrate, but you can't answer it. You could look at it if you get a text message, but you couldn't respond to the text message. Is that basically right? Unless you want to leave the um, town and go out in the town hallway here in the town chambers. Right. Okay. All right. Thank you. Does that help? Thank you. Anyone else like to respond from the public? Okay, do we have a motion? I move that we place communication E on file. Second. We have motion and a second. Any further discussion? Ready to vote, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, abstention, motion carries 5-0-0. Which brings us to, let's see, communication F. This is a communication dated March 21st, 2012 from Jonathan de la Bell relative to meeting attendance by public officials is received, placed on file, and the town council further directs. Uh, we discussed this at the work session. I think Jim just uh, discussed this uh, a minute ago, and uh, we said we would place it on file for all the reasons that Jim just listed. I think many of them. 
Right. Um, I will go through and explain that um, in order for something to be placed um, to make a change in the town charter, um, it must, the town council has to write a resolution, goes to the General Assembly, and then requesting um, that something be placed on the ballot to vote on. And then there would be a charter amendment or sometimes the town council um, appoints a charter review commission. Um, and we felt during the work session that we did not think that that was something that the town council felt that they um, should do at this time. Um, and the second paragraph of Jonathan's letter um, asking the town council to pass a resolution for the resignation of a school committee member. Um, I feel like that that is not a position that the town council would like to take at this time, that it would really um, set up a position with the school committee that we need a good working relationship with. So if you'd like to address it or if please come to the microphone and maybe there's more questions. Uh, Jonathan Daly LaBelle. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I guess I'm disappointed. I heard the uh, the work session discussion, and uh, you know, I hear what you're saying here. So, um, you know, I understand. You know, I think I understand what you're saying, and uh, it's it's logical what you're saying. Um, you know, I'm I'm disappointed that that's uh, the action you're taking, but I mean, you know, I can live with it. Um, you know, in the, the two communications I sent, they do kind of uh, overlap, you know. And, um, you know, so, but I think a lot of it, you know, the decorum, um, you know, does tie in with uh, respect for uh, the process, procedure, representation, uh, community members, um, and then, you know, meeting attendance, you know, ties right in as well. You know, if you can't make meetings, you know, really, what are you saying, um, you know, to the community, the people that have put you in that seat? Um, and I think a lot of it uh, comes from that, for whatever reason, you know, people get in the seats, not everybody, of course, and, uh, you know, but too many people get in the seats and they start to think it's their seat. And it's not, it's not their seat, it's the public seat. And I think that if, if people kind of kept that, you know, maybe that's something that, uh, I mean, I'm preaching to the choir here. You guys run good meetings, you know. School committee, it's a mess, I'm sorry. Um, you know, and I just in this communication, I say the faith the public had a reason to have has been irre irreparably broken. You know, I really believe that. And, uh, you know, a friend of mine gave me a, um, a comment. He said that for him, this, this summed up how he thinks of, of that issue of, of meeting attendance, um, you know, as well as fulfilling your other obligations. Uh, running for elected office is optional. Fulfilling the obligation should be mandatory, you know, and so I don't know how you can build in that accountability um, And I guess I would like to you know to say this is not personality driven uh, This is not personal um, You know, it seems that maybe there's that thought process at school committee that 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 that's what they think it is it's really uh, public servants, you know trying to serve the public and This is what is happening this term but the previous term, there was a member that had missed a lot of meetings. And so I think that's where I, I say that I'm disappointed um, because there is a track record of this, of this happening and is it gonna happen next time? You know, I guess maybe at the third time you look at it differently, I don't know. Um, so, you know, concerns with school committee beyond lack of meeting attendance, you know, uh, last year they came up with kind of an irregular meeting schedule um, for a while, they stopped recording half of their meetings, making it available. Uh, I don't know if people realize it, because it's, it's kind of, I think it's a shocking thing. I don't think people really think about this. At the school committee meeting, I'll, I'll start it this way. Town council, member of the public comes up, okay? Makes a comment, has a question. There's elected officials who are acting as public servants respond when appropriate. Over at school committee, you go up to speak. 
nothing. They don't respond. If yes. I could just Thank you. Um, interrupt. Um, we did, you know, have some legal counsel, and as far as jurisdiction over the school committee, Jonathan, there's there's nothing that that we legally can do about that. Um, for many years, there was not. Um, a strong relationship, working relationship with the town council and the school committee. This is going back many, many, many years. Um, I, I would hate to jeopardize the working relationship that we have with our school committee because in the long run, the kids end up losing out. So uh, we hear you know, your concerns. I know that you have brought them to the school committee table. Um, but really, you know, there's, not, there's not anything that we can do here at the town council table you know, to address the needs, that, the concerns that you have with the school committee. All right, well, I guess I'll, you know, I'll ask you to consider this, is that, is the relationship jeopardized when, you know, you're here, you attend your meetings, you're doing your work, and again, it's not just one person, there's a, becoming a track record um, that they're not doing what, what their job is. So, you know, as town council, I would think that you say, well, wait a minute, School committee doesn't have the same professionalism, courtesy, regard for public service. I would think that that starts to, to jeopardize the relationship. So, you know, just look at it from different things, uh, different angles. Um, I just want clarity uh, that, you know, just for the record, um, school committee bylaws call for members to fulfill their obligations by participating in meetings. The method of participation is discussion, deliberation, debate, and voting. Um, they're supposed to accept and encourage a variety of opinions from and communicate with the community. Uh, they're supposed to make public relevant inf information to promote communication and understanding between the school and community. And it does say they attend all regularly uh, scheduled committee meetings. So it's not, it's not optional. Um, and then further on in the bylaws, you know, and there's all these duties, which if you're not there, you're not, you're not fulfilling your duties. Um, and then, so just now the other thing is, I mean, this is important for you to be aware of, and it's, I think it's important for the, the public to be aware of, and the reason I'm going on here tonight is I would have spent more time on this tomorrow night at school committee, but they just canceled their meeting. So they're supposed to have two meetings a month. They just canceled one of them. So it's impossible for somebody to bring school committee business, school committee concerns, if they choose to, to abandon uh, their open public meetings. So I am sorry. Uh, to go on. I do understand what you're saying. Town Council does not govern the school committee, but when one of our elected boards abandons its responsibilities, and these are important issues, I feel as a citizen, it is I have the right and in a way even the responsibility to bring it forward at whatever forum there is. And you guys at least have the decency uh, to be here to listen, to communicate, to be respectful. And so for all those things, I do appreciate what you have here. And I don't know how we can get it to the other board, um, but I hope that you guys will really ponder on it and see what, you know, continue to think about it. Don't just close the book. Thank you. Thank you. Carol. I just wanted to respond, uh, Jonathan. I just want to say that uh, the norm, I would say, with most elected officials is that they fulfill their obligations and they do attend, and I think you can see that through even most of the school committee and um, the town council and the legislature. But so it's the exception to the, to the rule that doesn't attend. And generally, I would say looking at it, instead of just looking at it like from our town point of view, uh, statewide, when someone can't fulfill their obligations for whatever the reason, they either resign or they don't run for re-election. And I mean, that, that's, where, that's where it all comes comes back you know so you just that's where it all levels out and that's that's your uh, recourse of remedy but it usually works itself out and and that's what I've seen in other uh, other states uh, officials like with the legislature or mostly the legislature you see that but anyway I just want to make that comment that's it's usually the exception to the rule that someone doesn't attend most of the meetings so Jim? I certainly agree with uh, Carol on that, that right now is the only way, Jonathan, I guess, uh, election time, things leveling out, which is really sad. Uh, Jonathan does have a very strong point, though. 
how in the world can someone vote on um, personnel issues, budget, you name it. Um, frankly, should have abstained in all the votes. Um, that's what really throws a cloud into all this. And I remember, I, I, th I think I'd heard that um, when the uh, school committee uh, held a public hearing on adding $250,000 to the budget, $250,000 of the budget, I think there were two or three folks uh, in the audience to uh, uh, engage. I mean, I mean that, that's, that's really incredible. I, I certainly would like to think the school committee is, um, uh, of all things in the education world, should be engaging the public and should be engaging discussion and debate. Um, so I, 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 I agree, I, I certainly have that worry. And, um, but Carol's right, when it comes down to it, uh, the elections have, have a way of, um, uh, in most cases, evening things out. But thank you for your letters. Any further discussion here at the table? Do we have a motion? I move to uh, place communication F on file. Second. I have motion to second. Last minute discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, abstention, motion carries 5-0-0. Next on the agenda is comments from interested citizens. Somebody would like to come to the microphone? Just state your name for the record, please. I'm gonna apologize for coming up a third time. So I, I, I do apologize. No, this, no, you had the right with your two letters of communication and this is a different form. Thank you. All right. No apology um, needed. Maybe this could have been tied in with one of the other, my other uh, thoughts I brought forward. But, um, you know, there was a lot of, there was a brouhaha, you know, <laughs> as it's kind of been reported. And, um, you know, I think a lot of that was kind of a, uh, a manufactured controversy, you know, trying to create something where there really isn't much. And um, so whatever, that's politics. I, you know, I'd like to look forward and, and hopefully, you know, politics don't have to be in this chamber um, because it really is not appropriate, and especially when um, there's innuendos and allegations made against, you know, long-standing um, people that are here. Um, so, but uh, just to kind of put on the record that, uh, not, you know, pretty much most of that uproar was coming from members of the uh, local Democratic Town Committee. Um, and. Yeah. Do you have a concern? I, yes, I go would, ahead. Thank you. I would you. like to say another thing we discussed, Jonathan. Yes, thank you. And you'll appreciate this. Thank you. Is to um, have repetitious uh, innuendos, and we'd really like to eliminate that. Okay. It, it doesn't make any of us look good. I agree. And uh, to, to keep bringing up things like that is I'm, I'm going not helpful in, to anyone. Okay, well, thank you. It, thank it, you, Jonathan. Yes, going in a new direction as has been uh, mentioned in my previous comments about school committee, you know, people that have brought forward these concerns to this chamber, to your board, um, and maybe some are legitimate or not, but uh, if they are concerned with how things run, the school committee is a mess. And many of those members are on the local Democratic Town Committee. And so maybe uh, the people who have brought this, these concerns here should, I've got the list, and they should bring their hard work to have good representation and proper decision making over to school committee and, and help me with that load. Thank you, I think that's new, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Polly. Other comments from interested citizens? Thank you. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry, I missed that. With Polly, what what's going on? I just want asked for a, a clarification. Thank you, her, for bringing a clarification to the table about the um, how we were going to deal with repetition. The repetition. Well, I didn't see. That's how that's I checked. The first that's time that's Jonathan mentioned that tonight, I, so I, I I don't see where the repetition uh, comes, comes. I think into it play. was from the last from the, the last meeting, meeting, which I didn't think from the last meeting. That's how I took it. But that's that's good that you brought that up, Jim. That's what we want here at the table. Don't agree. Other comments from interested citizens? I have um, one date here. It is tomorrow night. The South County branch of the YMCA of Greater Providence um, is hosting um, an event to learn more about our commitment to strengthen the community for healthy places by design. So 
hopefully we'll see a full school committee there and it is at trios from 5.30 to 7.30. Will we all be attending? School I'm sorry, school, school committee. committee. See, you've got me thinking <laughs> school committee. I don't know why you're telling them to go. <laughs> town council. My daughter <laughs> corrects me all the time when I say school committee, town council. I'll not be there. I'll be Polly, there. no. I'm trying to go, yes. I'm trying to go too. I have a couple of work yeah. things. All right, does anybody have any other dates or any events that they have attended I'd like to share? No. All right, seeing none, I'll move to the town manager's report unless there's any further discussion. The only item I wanted to uh, speak on tonight is the meeting schedule for the week of April 9th. Uh, Council has regular council meeting on the 9th of April. On the 10th of April, that is the night that has been uh, scheduled by uh, Coastal Resource Management Council to hear the town's application dealing with the uh, proposed improvements on Matunic Beach Road, uh, more specifically the installation of the sheet pile uh, wall within the, uh, the right of way itself. We've also been advised verbally, but not anything that's uh, reached us as far as an actual public, uh, public notice, that the reclassification of the beach would also be heard on uh, April 10th as well. Again, that meeting will be at 6 p.m. at Corliss Auditorium at the, uh, the Bay Campus on South Ferry Road in Narragansett. Because that meeting uh, came in on the 10th of April, the council was required to reschedule one of the two public hearings required for the budget schedule. The budget hearing that was originally scheduled for April 10th has now been moved to April 12th, Thursday the 12th. So in summary, you've got a council meeting, regular council meeting on Monday, you've got CRMC on Tuesday, you've got the first budget hearing on Wednesday, and the second budget hearing on Thursday. Uh, I'm still looking for something for Friday night for you. Uh, but, thank you. <laughs> as of Give yet, we next. haven't come up with anything. Uh, Only if you're treating for dinner. <laughs> I'd be glad to answer any questions on either of the two reports that have been filed since the, uh, the last uh, report, if there are any. If not, uh, I'd yield to the solicitor. Thank you, Steve. Town solicitor's report. Again, unless there are any questions, I'm all set. Thank you. Which brings us to appointments, and we have a few. I move that uh, we reappoint Bernard Poppy to the Assessment Board of Review, which is a three-year term. His term expired in January of 2012, which would take him to January 2015. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? Ready to vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstention? Motion carries 5-0-0. And next, I would move that we reappoint Stephanie Ann Osborne to the Zoning Board of Review. Her term expires March 2012. It's a three-year term, so that would take her to March 2015. We have a second. second. We have a motion and a second. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstention? Motion carries 5-0-0. Um, and we will be setting up um, a couple of interviews for our next meeting boards and we are just waiting for some respond um, economic development committee members to respond with their um, terms which moves us to new business item 13a this is a resolution authorizing an award of bid to Sunbelt Rentals Incorporated doing business as case <coughs> of New England 800A Hartford Turnpike Shrewsbury Massachusetts for a JRB grapple bucket rake 350 GBR, including installation in an amount not to exceed $35,262, and is further described in a memorandum from the Public Services Director to the Town Manager dated March 9, 2012, and entitled Bid Recommendation, Debris Management Grapple. Recommendation is to award to the low bidder uh, Sunbelt Rentals, Inc., uh, doing business as Casey, uh, case of uh, New England at uh, $35,000. $262. This is a specialized uh, debris management uh, uh, equipment component. What it is is it's, uh, uh, it fits on the uh, 
town's front end loader. It allows us to be able to uh, move debris and to be able to use an articulated uh, arm within the, uh, the unit itself to be able to carry the materials or to place it into vehicles. Uh, certainly, its major use would be uh, for post-storm debris uh, removal, but it would also have other activities as far as the movement of materials at the highway garage. This was budgeted in the town's capital improvement program for the 11-12 year. There is sufficient funds within the overall budget uh, to be able to uh, accommodate this purchase. A motion to approve new business item A. Second. Motion and a second. Any questions? Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstention? Motion carries. Which brings us to new business item E. This is a resolution authorizing an award of bid to 146 Supply Center Incorporated, Route 146, P.O. Box 209, Millbury, Massachusetts, for the purchase of a John Deere 1600 Series 2 Tri-Deck Wide Area Mower and John Deere 1445 Front Mount Mower in accordance with all bid specifications, an amount not to exceed $69,402 including trade-in, and is further described in a memorandum from the Director of Leisure Services to the Town Manager dated March 20th, 2012, and entitled Bid Recommendation, Wide Area Mower, Front Mount Mower, and Utility Sand Groomer. Two pieces of equipment uh, that are proposed for acquisition. One is a wide area mower, which is a large mower that's used for uh, large fields, such as at Tuckertown. Second is the front end mower, which would also be used in some of the large fields, but uh, uh, can be used in some of the smaller areas as well. The uh, wide area mower, we're recommending the lowest uh, qualified bidder uh, with 146 supply. On the front end uh, mower, we're looking at that being the second low bidder. We have uh, moved to uh, to go to the uh, away from the low bidder based on the uh, that uh, bid not meeting the uh, uh, prescribed bid specifications. Uh, so we're asking for approval in a, a dollar amount not to exceed the $69,402 for the two uh, pieces. The uh, wide area mower will cost 47123 That's uh, based on uh, the initial cost net of the trade-in allowance and the front end uh, mower net price will be uh, 22278 for the total 69401.27. Thank you. I move approval of new business item E. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstention? Motion carries 500. New business item F is a resolution authorizing an award of bid to Turf Products Corporation, 157 Moody Road, Enfield, Connecticut, for the purchase of a Toro Sand Pro Utility Sand Grooming Vehicle in accordance with all bid specifications in an amount not to exceed $15,943, including trade-in, and is further described in a memorandum from the Director of Leisure Services to the Town Manager dated March 20th, 2012, and entitled Bid Recommendation wide area mower, front mount mower, and utility sand groomer. Low bid uh, was Alan seed on this item by approximately uh, $400. Recommendation is to go to the second low bidder, uh, Turf Products, as outlined on the agenda. Uh, this equipment, uh, uh, the, the equipment for the low bid uh, uh, does not uh, uh, meet bid specifications. Uh, only the Toro will meet the requirements of the department uh, because it has interchangeable grooming components that can be used with the other in-ground uh, in ground grooming machine that we have. So the recommendation is to go with the second low bidder uh, turf products for those reasons. Thank you. Do we have a motion? Motion to approve new business item F. Second. Motion and second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstention? Motion carries 5-0-0. Any further comments before we adjourn? No. Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstention. Motion carries 5-0-0. Thank you. Meeting adjourned at 8.55.